everyone, it's Jonathan, and welcome back to Wonderland Wednesday. Today we're starting a brand new series with Nikki from Trivial Theater, and this time we're talking about the worst animated versions of Alice in Wonderland. This miniseries is another one that I've expanded from a conversation originally recorded to be one long podcast, and like the other one, it will also be in four parts. I've had this idea ever since my first podcast with Nikki last year, which coincidentally was also for Wonderland Wednesday. We talked about some obscure Alice in Wonderland PSAs all about drug abuse and British label laws. I'll have that linked in the description if you're interested. Anyway, Nikki likes talking about terrible movies, whether intentional or unintentional, and I knew there were a couple of really bad animated Alices, because I'd already talked about them years ago. One called What's the Matter with Hatter, and another one Alice fans refer to as the Cinematronic version. And while I really didn't want to watch them again, I knew that they would make for a good conversation with Nikki, so I decided to bite the bullet and just go for it. And then, because apparently I wasn't torturing myself enough, I asked Jenna if she had any other suggestions for terrible versions for us to watch. So my podcast then expanded into four versions, now including two cheaply animated, made-for-kids web cartoons. The first one that we'll be talking about today is from a series called Increditales. And it is definitely not incredible. I guess we'll talk about the first one that she sent me, which is like barely over five minutes. It's from a show called Increditales, which I had never heard of before she sent me this thing. And from what I can tell, it's some show on Amazon Prime. It probably didn't originate there. It's probably some... I don't know, some other studio, probably in a foreign market, making cheap animation to sell and trying to earn a quick buck. Because that's how a lot of these really cheap, short versions are made. Because there are others not quite as bad as these. But there are a lot of studios that take fairy tales and other stories that are in the public domain and just make things for kids out of them just to make a quick buck. I used to see, a, when I was a kid, we'd see, like, at Dollar General, there would be, like, these videotapes that they'd always release, like, when another Disney movie came out. And I always thought that it was so weird. And looking back, I'm thinking, they're probably doing that just to, like, trick somebody's grandma into buying the wrong movie. <laughs> oh, totally. And that happens so often. Yeah. So I think this is sort of the same thing, except this isn't like a movie. This is like a six minute segment of a show that was at least one season and had like three or four different stories in each episode. So there was a lot of content crammed into this series and really truncated, but it all seems to be Disney ripoffs. Oh God, yeah. I looked at all the thumbnails and it was just like really bad interpretations of Disney designs. (laughs) Well, and they actually, you look at the, um, the actual characters and you don't get so that so much with Alice. Like she has a little bit of definition that makes her her own, but you look at like the Cheshire cat, um, the, uh, the, the queen of hearts, um, like all of the characters, they are basically, I mean, and even the caterpillar, they are mm-hmm. the ones from from Disney. There's yes. no like you look at it and it's like okay that is that is that is outright rip off. Yeah, it's like they didn't even try to hide the fact that they were stealing Disney's designs. No. <laughs> it was there's one thing that I didn't watch it <laughs> maybe I will at some point but I saw that in one of the thumbnails it looked like a really bad interpretation of the Grinch like probably the most <laughs> recent Grinch one from Illumination Studio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the title was The Man Who Stole Christmas. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like trying to steal a book that they they can't obviously get the rights to, and they just change the Grinch to The Man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, green a green man, you know, with a, you know, a, a green angry man, you know, that's that's all really all you gotta say, I guess. <laughs> the Hulk who stole Christmas. There you go. There you go. I like it. Or like the jolly green giant that stole Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it was the shortest and I think generally speaking, the animation of the ones we watched was probably the best, but I feel like this one, if it was done as part of a series, it probably had more budget behind it. Probably 
I, I don't know how to write them on animation because they were all bad in different ways. And this yeah. one I feel like is just cheap. Yeah. It's, but, it, they didn't put enough animation into the characters. Right. Well, and it was all voice. It was all narration. There really wasn't any actual, there wasn't a ton mm. of actual voiceover or voice to speak of. It was all exposition. Yeah. Except she screamed when she fell down the rabbit hole. <laughs> well, and then least... she screamed when she met the Tweedles. <laughs> <laughs> Which, for some reason, I found hilarious. <laughs> well, you know, if you're going to meet up with a pair of absolute twins that looks like um, they were straight out of uh, Disney properties, then, you know, I would scream, too. <laughs> chances of getting a DC or DMCA are pretty high. <laughs> I am i don't know how that show is getting away with it, especially since Amazon is hosting it. Yeah. But do they know that Amazon has so much content and a lot of it is uploaded by individual people? So there's no guarantee, like, there's no guarantee that they're going to know. Hmm. Unless it's brought to their attention by somebody, which, you know, if you're Let's talking to them out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 I, I will say this one also, you know, you get like that, that, like the, you know, like four to six year old programming, like the, like for kids ages four to six or in that realm. Uh -huh. This felt very much like, like a blue, not a blues clues, but like that realm of, or, um, oh, what was the, there was like Emily, the princess or whatever, like those kind of shows, like it kind of fits into that felt like that realm of, of, of age group. To me, this felt like those cheap YouTube videos that people used to make for kids. Oh yeah. Maybe they, they still, still do, them. but sure after the do. whole child protection act or whatever, they kind of disappeared. Yeah. I think some companies still try to get by with making them, but there was like a period of time where these were like super popular, just people churning out the most basic content for kids just to get clicks and money. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what this felt like, but maybe with a little bit of a budget behind it. Yeah, just I was a little say, bit of a budget. Yeah. I mean, I, I, again, from a general perspective, the, the animation was maybe more consistent. Like it, it, like it moved with the environment you didn't see someone jump up five stairs you know and, and make like they were going mm -hmm. up 10 it, it it felt a little bit more like there was a little bit of care behind it mm -hmm. from that perspective despite the disney rip like the disney ripoff part of it is obviously terrible but it mm -hmm. was at least a consistent everything sort of worked within the world it looked like it all fit yeah i feel like the best part of this in a weird way was the backgrounds though Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like that's where they put the most work into. Because I actually agree. liked the weird forest where the Tweedles were. It was just <laughs> kind of eerie, but in a cool... Just the colors and the designs, I kind of liked that. Uh, one other touch in the background that I, I sort of liked, it was random and weird, though, was when she falls down the rabbit hole, there's, like, a giant ground sloth skeleton... <laughs> <laughs> like one of those prehistoric giant sloths that's just randomly at the bottom of the hole <laughs> i don't know why but i kind of like that even though it didn't fit with what should have been there i thought that was kind of creative ish and just something that you're not going to find in any other version no it definitely like you say the backgrounds and the animation aspect of it was a, it's pretty solid across the board um you know, the voiceover did what it needed to do. I think it did a relatively straightforward narrative. Like they didn't go off on too many random tangents. They kept the story pretty lean, which obviously you'd have Very to. Very lean. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I guess if you're going to say they didn't try and shove too much in, they kept it, they kept it, you know, moving along at a decent pace. I thought at least as yeah. much as they could. <laughs> Well, there were a few random things in here that I thought were amusing in a bad way. How about it? <laughs> so, in the scene with the rabbit at his house, in the story, she's supposed to be in the house, and she, I think it's she finds another drink me bottle, and ends up huge, and stuck in the house. In this version, she finds this random macaron on the ground, and eats it, and then trashes his house. 
she's outside so she had to like run through his house it does not show this in the animation it just says that through the narration that his house is ruined and it shows the crunched after effects <laughs> i just thought it was hilarious that she's outside she finds this random cookie eats it and then destroys his house <laughs> Well, you know, that is what happens if you eat too many macarons. I mean, I can't tell you how many houses I've destroyed, you know, after I eat macarons. Apparently they're a dangerous dessert. And then the carrot brings her back down. What was it? And I don't remember. Was it the carrot that brought her back down to normal size? No, in the book, they're throwing pebbles into the into the house at her. And then they turn into little cakes, which she eats, and then she shrinks. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> So in this version also, even though the animation was a little bit better than some of the others, there were little weird mistakes here. Like when she's at the caterpillar, she walks by him and her bow cuts off his head. <laughs> just for a few frames, the, the bow just like slices right between his head and his body. <laughs> her feet didn't like to stay on either. Like they were kind of all over the board too. <laughs> Yeah, they they didn't pay close enough attention. They're pro this is probably like a hurried production. They're trying to get as much out as they can. Oh, I'm sure. I love the fact that her head is like a balloon. Like it bounces up and down and it kind of changes shape as she walks. <laughs> her eyes kind of, well, all the eyes kind of do a little bit of that too. The, I yeah. did not like the eyes. They were creepy. They looked like those, um, you know, Thai Beanie Babies? Oh, yeah. After... They after Beanie Babies, they made these other things. I don't know what they're called, but they have these giant eyes. Mm. And they just, like, stare into your soul. And that's what <laughs> these eyes looked like. <laughs> they are surprisingly detailed. Like, everything else has a relative amount of detail, but it's still, it's very, like, clip arty. Yeah, uh -huh. their, their eyes, though, like, they are definitely detailed. <laughs> and the Beanie Baby things you're talking about, like, they've got massive heads and then tiny bodies. Yeah. The rest of the story is very truncated and off as well, because she goes to the tea party, but for some reason the Tweedles are there, and none of the other characters other than the Mad Hatter, just the Mad Hatter and the Tweedles for some reason. And then she goes to the castle, and the cards are just painting flowers. There's no, there's no like, talking about why they're painting the flowers. This is just they're painting flowers. And they're pink. They're not even red. <laughs> they're like, they're like a, like gradient, like a... Like two shades of like like rose and really light pink or something like that, and they're they're heart shaped. <laughs> yeah, it's they they didn't pay enough attention to the point of them in the story. Yeah, and then the queen just unprovoked shouts off with her head when she meets her, and then she runs away and wakes up, and that's the end. Well, you know, if I came out across someone with a gigantic head and like really freaky eyes, I would yell off with her head as well. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like prejudice to me <laughs> how, how many how many large-headed large eyes people do you run across in a day-to-day -day thing if that came across you in real life i think you'd probably do the same i mean the chances of that bow cutting off another caterpillar's <laughs> head are you willing to take that chance because i'm not behead them before they behead you <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> Thank you to Nikki for joining me on this episode of Wonderland Wednesday. She'll be back next week to talk about another cheap internet cartoon. But in the meantime, if you want more from her, I'll have her links in the description below. That's all for today, so we'll see you next time for another episode of Wonderland Wednesday. Thanks for watching.